Right, I'm here to speak about the challenges of this century. The failure of the system to tackle them. What we could achieve if we put our collective spirit together. How we can start doing that today. And what we need to do is to make sure this is a century which we can be proud of. But before I begin, I want to reflect on where we've got to. We have a lot to be proud of about human civilization today. In the 20th century, we have recovered from two world wars and healed and since dramatically imp improved literacy rates. Infant mortality has fallen. Number of deaths per guns has fallen since 1950. Fertility, number of children per women has fallen from 5 to 2.5. We've averted some important crises with technology and cooperation. For instance, AIDS, nuclear conflict, the ozone layer being depleted. However, we have been given and left with some unprecedented challenges. And to overcome them, we are going to need to be the bravest generation. Climate change, the concentration of CO2 in our atmosphere, has risen from 335 parts per million to 415 parts per million in the last 70 years. The last time we've seen that concentration in the atmosphere was 14 million years ago. 20 of the hottest years are, have been in the last 22. We are at a tipping point. Already signs of negative feedback loops of the climate problem are here. Arctic tundra is burning. Million of, millions of year old methane is burning into our atmosphere in the Arctic today. The Arctic sea ice is, is, is at its lowest level it has ever been and will continue to shrink until we have a horrible feedback loop, until we warm and we have no control over it. Already we are seeing dramatic weather events here in Britain. The heat wave followed by recent freak flooding is an example of it. The east-west rail line went down two days ago because of landslides caused by flooding. But on top of climate breakdown, we are seeing ecosystem breakdown. 60% of the total weight of insects has dropped since 1970 because of agriculture and development pressures. We are in the sixth extinction level event known in fossil history. In the UK alone, 10% of our species are on the red list. 56% of species are in decline. On top of it, our population is on the rise. In 1950, there was 2.5 billion people. We now have 7 billion. By 2050, we will have 9 billion. We are in an unprecedented challenge. What we've achieved today could all be undone, leaving the possible legacy of a greedy species that destroyed our planet and degraded every honourable sense of human morals on the way out. Already, the super-rich are meeting to discuss what they do in the event. Already, national security reports to the likes of the Australian government are of a breakdown of civilization as we know it in this century. Already, countries like the US and China are either are hand-pollinating crops or are having to pollinate bees. Let's wake the hell up! This is a crisis! This is not a drill, shout Extinction Rebellion. Tell the truth, says Greta Thunberg. And the most people accept this century will be one of disaster. What makes me ask, what is the bloody point of anything we do? Let's bring it home. Between 2030 and 2050, London will have average summer temperatures of 35 degrees. Our parks, like the one we stand in today, will be grey and yellow, not green. Regular flood events will destroy our communities. People will need to be withdrawn from our coasts. Food will be 
et food will escalate in price. Poisoned whales and dolphins will be washed up on our shores. And abroad, well, it will be a lot worse. And they will want to come here. Across the world, we already have evidence of climate-driven migration. 16 million people were displaced in Syria between 2002 and 2016, before war broke out. Punjab in India, known as the breadbasket of India, has lost huge swathes of production farming land due to the climate change and people are migrating. Regular floods in Bangladesh, which will soon be underwater, are making people destitute. Islands like the Maldives are already looking at climate protection because they know they will be sunk. The coral reefs across our world are being bleached as the sea heats and rises. Somewhere between 2040 and 2050, sea level rise will be about a meter. An unprecedented melting of Arctic and Antarctic ice fills our oceans. By the end of this century, this rise in sea level could be more like four meters, engulfing huge areas of London, Kent, and probably the whole of the Netherlands and Denmark. What gets me is we have all the bloody solutions. We have, if we just had solar panels on 1% of our nation, which is 2,635 square kilometers, we could power our whole country with electricity. That's just 1% of the 5.9% of the land already built on. Wind power in the North Sea could power 80% of our energy needs. Wave and tidal, 20%. We have affordable, effective electric cars. We could move to much earlier than 2040. Air source and ground source heat pumps, alongside an array of energy efficiency measures, could reduce the heating energy needed in our housing stock by 40%, whilst moving us to 100% renewable energy. Recent studies have found that we could decentralise the national grid with 95% of power being sourced locally. If we allowed just 10% of our land to rewild, we would absorb 20% of our current carbon budget. Whilst restoring biodiversity and the soils our country, in our country so that we have carbon neutral economy which will help us form a positive future. Already due to advances in technology, we can replace the herbicides with weeding robots. We know that by affecting natural solutions to pests, we can have effective results and more effective results in the use of pesticides. We can implement zero tell regimes so our microbes survive, our, our, our air quality is made, our, our soil quality is maintained whilst maintaining the high level of production. We can reduce waste, which food waste, which represents 40% of all food produced. We can use biodegradable materials instead of plastics, even for our tyres, which account for 50% of all plastic pollution and, huge, and a huge contributor to climate change and air quality. So what is stopping this obvious change? Well, it's complacency, it's politics, and it's a combination of them both. Complacency, we have a natural desire at this stage in human history to get short-term rewards. We want endorphin rushes we, from getting things quickly. We want to be lazy, as when we have abundance, that's when our bodies are programmed to do. We want means to feed our lust and vanity. That's why we spend acres of time looking for shares and likes on the like of Facebook and Twitter. Our politics is short-term and therefore short-sighted. Since 1982, we have known about this crisis through the Brundtlen Report. Our systems are not created to respond to long-term unprecedented challenges. Our politics are driven by the desire to be re-elected. Therefore, they support our short-term desires and they are funded by those who want to maintain the status quo. These things together create a toxic negative spiral with the forces at play as they currently are, our migration on our doorstep and short-term views in our minds, politics is dividing and people's attitudes are becoming more either protectionist 
or liberal. The extremes of politics are being played out in front of us as we are clearly reaching the limits of sustaining our lifestyles through our planetary support systems. I liken the state of the human race to a single human being. It is like we are 21. We want things quickly. We want to consume and party. We, we aren't quite ready to grow up and face the challenges that we've become, and so we become even more hedonistic as pressure builds. But our bank balance is running low. In fact, our bank manager wants to call in the debts. We, we are now, now threatened with not being able to feed ourselves. The question that is now posed to us is will you serve your addictive lifestyle by unwholesome means or resulting in an ever degrading way of life or will you decide to grow up and live a meaningful existence? We are like the billions of cells in that body. The difference is that we have a say and that body has to respond to our demands. We will remain complacent and complicit in supporting a system that is depleting our reserves or we will make a future bearable for our children and grandchildren. Possibly a better world than we have now. Possibly one that is actually sustainable. How are we going to do it and how is it possible, you ask? These are the hurdles always thrown down in front of me when I talk this way. What about the rest of the world? We can't trust them to help us out. Human beings are inherently greedy. We can't turn that around. Short-term politics locks us into disaster. Brexit has to be the most important thing. We need a disaster to get people to wake up. Our politicians have to implement policy and then I will do it. I can't contribute because I'm too busy. Now is the time to create a movement of positivity, to coalesce around an idea. We can make a century which is better than our ch for our children and grandchildren than any other century known in history. But how is this possible? We need to occupy change at every level. People need the knowledge of things they can do to make change. They need support. People need to see others change and they will be encouraged to do the same. We need a means to take our ideas to, and the collective wisdom to our governments and demand support in making a future we can be proud of. This challenge is one for everyone to lead on. We all have to lead by example. It is this simple. What will your children think if you do not? We have started the kernel the seed of this change just seven weeks ago. Already 150 people have come in solidarity to join the Better Century community. Already we have the kind of experience and knowledge in our community which could help anyone make a significant contribution in their own way to tackle the problems ahead. We do not demand that people become vegan or start wearing sandals. Quite the opposite. We are inclusive as we believe whatever contribution that can be made in our busy lives should be supported. You can already get advice from our community about reducing your, your use of plastics, making your home more energy, energy efficient, moving to 100% renewable energy supply, making ethical investments, using electric vehicles, using a bike in day-to-day -day travel, putting up solar panels, installing an air source heat pumps, and so much more. This collective knowledge base is a game changer. The encouragement people could experience from doing something good could transform what we, what we want to do online and in our own lives. If we build a big enough community, not only will we have the knowledge, but the political will to push politicians and make change. Whole local communities could be created by Better Century. Communities that provide solutions as well as challenging politicians. Communities empowered with knowledge and experience to make change. I ask you, can we really trust short-term politics with the crisis ahead? 
Isn't it time that we took matters into our own hands? Isn't it time that we, the people, made the change that we want to see in the world rather than sitting around idly? Well then, let's make a better century. My friends, it would be beautiful and our children would be proud. My vision of a better century is this, but you can have your own. No more geopolitical issues because we don't need to import oil and gas. We actually recycle every single drop which comes into our country. Reduce use of resources, giving us, giving us more time for community and family. More stable economics, not making us rich but happy. A thriving biodiverse ecosystem around us to inspire our day-to-day -day lives. Cleaner air and water, which improves our health. A feeling that we work day to day to create a beautiful, improved future. Today, I invite you to make a better century, to join a community that is committed to transforming hopes, to support a business like no other, which is about a movement, a, a reference point, a support system, a lobby and social change maker, a new form of social media that doesn't promote vanity, but compassion and care. Your contributions will make change in the following ways. By sharing, you will encourage others. By learning, you will find a way to be part of the solution. By acting, you will be the change that you want to see in the world. And by participating, you will fund and enable change. My promise to you as founder is we will do everything we can to make a century where all life thrives. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.